It won't fit back. It just won't go back in the box. Just go like that. Ooh, that actually looks good. Hey, that might, we might have something here. So I messed up guys, did you hear that? That's what we call backlash. It's the space in between the pinion gear, which this is attached to or part of, and the ring gear, which makes the tires go around. This is massive. Not supposed to be anywhere close to that. And I did this to myself. I got my drive shaft made. Or I got it ordered. If you guys remember from the last video, if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. But like I said, I decided to upgrade this pinion yoke here to a 1350 because I had a 1330 on it. That way, when this rear end does blow, the new drive shaft's ready to go right up, right on. What I failed to do was the proper research. Inside here, this shaft is the pinion. Right? There's a in, inner and an outer bearing. And in between there, there's this thing called a crush sleeve. Now, that crush sleeve can only be crushed one time. I didn't really know that. When I put this new one on, I just ugga dug it on there. I over ugga dug it. So it's crushed way too far, pushing the pinion in too far, I believe, creating all this slop. So to fix this, the whole rear end has to come apart. Really shot myself in the foot on this one. So Curtis and I actually rebuilt this. Well, I say rebuilt. What we did was we put a locker in it because this came factory with an open rear end. But we only had to do the backside. We didn't have to touch the pinion, which is where things get scary and time consuming and small numbers. You remember from the uh, throw out bearing? I'm real good at small numbers. So now I have to basically undo what we did. Now, I didn't have basically any of the tools to do this, so I had to go purchase them. The way I look at it is money spent on tools is never money wasted. Um, so I'll show you guys what you're going to need here. Now, I'm not for certain you actually need all of these tools. I went and got them. A, I like owning tools. B, I'm going to need them someday in the future probably. And C, I'm on a time crunch, so I don't want to get into the middle of this and realize I need new tools. Got to go get them, come back. They don't have them. Wait, blah, blah, blah. So we got bearing puller this is a dial indicator with a magnetic base these fancy arms here to check backlash we'll we'll get to that race punch hopefully the size i need's in there use this to, i think you use this to, i'm not going to use this to punch it out i'm going to use a extension i'm sure and they need one of these fancy inch pound newton meters this will help you, well, well, not help you, you need this to check rotational force on the pinion. So eventually we will ugga dugga a little bit, but you gotta ugga dugga slowly and check that as you go. I think we want, I don't know, I'm gonna check before I tell you. This is gonna be a process. And I don't believe Kurt's gonna be here today, so I'm on my own doing something brand new. But this is what we do here. Everything we do on this truck's brand new to us. We'll figure it out as we go. I got both wheels off, both brake calipers off, all the bolts back in the hole so we don't lose them. This is your classic GM 10 bolt. Nobody likes them. They are a C-clip axle, which I will show you here shortly once we get done with this. Um, C-clips are all that really holds them in. And uh, well, and the, the calipers kind of hold them in a bit, but that's not good enough for NHRA purposes. But anyway, Next step is to get this rear cover off, drain the fluid out, and remove the carrier. So, of these things, pig mats. I'll lay a pig mat down underneath it. If you work in a shop and you don't have pig mats, do you really work in a shop? There 
here she comes. Yeah, that brand new. Here's the inside of your diff. It's your ring gear. Pinion your ears back up in there. This is the locker we have in here already. If yours is stock, you're gonna see a bunch of spider gears in there, they're called, and a pin. That goes up through there, and there will be a little eight millimeter bolt that goes through the side of one of them. Comes in and it connects into that pin. You have to remove that first, spin it to pull the pin out, and then you'll be able to pull the spider gears out or the whole assembly, however you want to do it. But you also have two caps on either sides, either sides, either side. Um, in here, you're going to have your axle bearings, and then you're going to have shims, I believe, on the outside of both of them. Uh, it's important that not only the caps but the shims go back in the exact same orientation that they came out of meeting side by side and right side up so you're going to want to mark them so before these caps come off and this carrier comes out we have to slide the axles out now i said earlier these are held in with c-clips on a true track which is what i have here a locking style differential this has to come out it's held in with um, snap rings there. So I'll have to pull that out. This plug will come out, and then there'll be another plug in there, and then we'll push the axles in from either way, dropping the seat clips out. God bless it. Hey, look at that. It didn't go flying out at me. I got it. Well, this comes out. There's that guy. And then this little guy in here. There we go. Plug. Hold the axles in place. I'm gonna go push this axle in. You guys should be able to see that C clip fall out. See if I can. Did you see it move in? To a magnet. Oh, that's the joys of a magnet. I wish I had another person here. There we go. Well, not exactly where I wanted it. Fun fact, when I just did that, I squeezed on the backing plate and the whole thing just collapsed in my hands. So that's wonderful. There we go, got it. Okay, now your action should come out. go ahead and take it all the way out here's your axle okay it's usually a good idea to take these all the way out because if you don't take them all the way out they'll sit on the seal and flatten it and then they won't work no more when I say work I mean seal and I have seals to replace this and I'm almost nervous show you this I'm almost nervous to take any of that out of there and this is crusty I should just buy a whole new axle but as you guys know we're not exactly loaded here at on the brink I could buy a new axle when's it gonna be here who's gonna build it am I gonna build it then I miss out on the opportunity of learning how to build it so we're gonna try and do it the cheap way for right now maybe i'll put them seals in maybe i won't i'm gonna go pull the other axle out and then we'll take you back down below to do the pull the carrier out okay 
axles are out. Now I can take these caps back off and this will pull out. I'm gonna try and set these caps down the same way they came off, just like I did the first time. Same with the bolts. And try not lose the shims. Remember we got orange over here and yellow over here. Okay, trusty pry bar. Oh man, what am I missing? I don't know what's in there. And that sucker doesn't want to come out. There it goes. I really like to get some prying on this side. There we go. There it's coming. There we go. Ugh. Ugh. All right, I got it out. I had to put the pry bar down, pull it all out in one unit while holding on to the shims rest it on my chest and then ninja roll out from underneath the truck because my lift is broken and i got this little spot laid out here remember i said we got yellow on the passenger right there orange on the driver right there so i got it laid out right here just the way it came out i'm going to put it in just like that again now the likelihood of these stock shims working is slim to none but it's still important that the races go back on the bearings that they came off of. And I'm gonna try and put it in with these stock ones and see what happens. And we'll shim from there. <clears throat> Cause when we did this the first time, we actually got away with using the stock stuff. Our backlash was fine. However, in that scenario, we didn't touch the pinion. The nut never came off. The pinion never came out. <clears throat> so that pinion depth never changed. This time it's gonna. So the likelihood of them working Slim to none, but again, races need to stay with the bearings. And we might as well try them stock ones first and see how it goes. So now we're on to getting the pinion off. Joy. Remember how I told you I kind of ugga dugged it on? Well, we're gonna ugga dugga it off. Got it. Uh-oh. I got a new one, but. Everyone says inch and a quarter, but it doesn't feel right to me. See that? She doesn't look great. There we go. You join out. Washer came with it. I do not have a new washer, so we have to save that. Probably clean it up a little bit. Got it. Okay, to get this seal out. All right, there's the seal. There's a the bearing. And there's your first race. You see that? That's your race right in there. Pinion fell out. Now we need to go to the other side. Well, technically we could pound that race out. See them notches? I wanna put an extension in there. We're gonna try and knock them out. Should've got a longer extension. All right, all right, so here's your pinion gear. This is the culprit here, crushed leave. 
You guys see that? So this was all the way down here on this ridge right there. I got it off off camera. Uh, it took a little bit of doing. I had to get some pliers and then, you know, just eh, the whole way up because, well, I crushed it too far. So this is the problem. This is why we are pulling this entire axle apart for this. I have the new one right here. You guys see that? Uh, it's a little different design. Like this one caves in, you know, on the center there. Whereas this one pops out. So I don't think like I crushed this so far it went in. That's not how it's supposed to go. This may just be a different design. I don't know. But as you can see, this one effectively slides right down there. Actually, it feels a little loose. I don't know. It'll tighten up, I guess. I don't know. This one, she's crushed way too far. So there's the problem. Problem gone. New part going in. But since we're here, we're going to replace this bearing. Because I have one. And I bought the tools to replace them. When things break like this, it's a reason to upgrade in my opinion. However, feeling like I'm on a time crunch here to get this done, to get you guys content, and the fact that I have all this stuff in stock, and I have the new, there's a new bearing, there's a new seal. I have all this stuff, so I feel like I should use it, right? So we'll do all this and then uh, next year we'll tear it all back down and we'll put new gears in it and probably a spool. So, guess who showed up? Hi. Mr. Reliable. You always know where he's at, when he's coming, things of that nature. So, he's here. Uh, I started to put together the bearing press tool. Uh, we tried it out, it didn't look great. Things were bending that shouldn't be bending. So, uh, one tool I didn't tell you guys I bought, press. So Curtis came up with the idea of using the press. We got the pinion gear down through these arbor plates. This is part of the bearing press tool. So we're gonna try and use this press to punch it out. So let's see how it goes. Ah, uh, I think we got it. Did it go? Yeah, ah, it did things. Oh my goodness. Did things. Will. Actually, it's not going to make it. The gears are the gears are rubbing. This could be an issue. Okay, we're done. All right, can you guys see that there? Gears are hitting the I beam. So what now, Mr. Smart Guy? Uh... All right, so what we did was flip this, right? Get more space under there. Hopefully we have enough. Oh, we definitely got enough, I can tell from here. So, this should do it. Oh, you got it? Yeah, one of us. Yeah, go ahead. There she goes. Okay. Old bearing out. New bearing in. I'll clean this up some. Go from there. We uh, rigged this up here. This is a piece of stainless side lying around. Arbor plate in the bottom, arbor plate in the top, jack up top, should go swimmingly. Like a glove. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, there is a shim down here. See that? We decided we're leaving it, basically. So that shim down there at the bottom, we decided we're gonna leave that in there. And we're just gonna kinda hope that it works. Don't recommend you do that. But this is what we're doing. We're also not changing gears. Yeah, we're not changing the gears. When you change the gear ratios, things get really wacky. So we're not gonna, we're not doing that. We're kind of just hoping this is going to go back together correctly. Uh, hoping in this shop usually works out pretty well for us, right? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's a 50-50, really. 
So, like I said earlier in the video, I'm replacing all this junk eventually. The axles are gonna snap, probably the first or second clutch dump, and then we'll change gear ratios because this gear ratio, we'll probably be doing 100-ish for six gear to even be useful. So mm -hmm. this is all gonna change. So I'm hoping it just lasts long enough to have some fun with it for this season at least. Tougher? Yeah, I think we're there. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, so now we need to get the housing cleaned up, new races put in. This back, this bearing doesn't get pressed on. The uh, Ugga Duggas of the new nut kind of do that for us with the crushed leaves. Did we decide are we just going to install this? I think we're just gonna install it. Yeah, we'll just install so it. So the way you're the way you're supposed to do this is you're supposed to put this guy in with your new bearings and races. Then you're supposed to put the carrier in, get your measurement. Well, you know, you gotta get a pinion depth uh, measurement first. And then uh, then you put the carrier in, check your tooth pattern with some of this here yellow paint. This stuff here and check your backlash all at the same time at that point you determine if you need to change that shim down in there I just showed you guys to move this closer to or further away from the green gear and then once you get that established then you reinstall you uninstall it reinstall it with said crush sleeve and call it done we're not gonna do that we're gonna install it once and be done with it because like I just said earlier we're not changing gears. We're hoping this is gonna work and hope usually works out well for us. Yeah. Here we go. Gonna do light once we get started. Wow. This is gonna take some smashing. All right. What do you say get the extension and I hold it while you swing the hammer, maybe? That sounds like a terrible idea. It sounds like a good way of screwing you up. <laughs> there it goes. I think we're seated. I think we're seated. I don't know if you guys were able to hear that. You can hear the, the sound of it change. We're good and seated now. to go yep all right sweet and we're checking uh, uh now you can go now you can speak all right we're checking pinion drag right rotational force rotational force seems to be like three right now we need to be between 14 and 19. Mm -hmm. so we're just ugga dugga in really slowly we don't over crush that sleeve yep That was way too much. Is, is that's a okay. That's an instrument of measurement. So just take it easy now. Yep. Now oh, we're at like thirty. I went too far. Uh. So putting it back together right now. I'm supposed to have like 14 to 19 inch pounds of rotational force on that pinion, right? Yep. Uh, went too far, got 30. Okay. Uh, give me, uh, how, uh, what happens if I run this? You're gonna burn up your bearings. How fast? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't, I can't say for sure, sometimes it's, Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it'll last a little bit. I, I can't give you a, 
a good answer. Uh huh. Did the kit not come with an extra crush sleeve? It came with the one that's in it now and currently crushed too far. Ah. So, yeah, it only it only came with one. This is old stuff I've had since I put the locker in it. It came with that locker. I just never did it because I didn't use or I didn't take the pinion out. Understandable. So my options are leave it in, run it, blow my bearings, or take it all apart and start over. Correct. Or buy a whole new axle with 33 splines and a full spool and different gears. I like that option. It's just very expensive. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to sit here and think for a while and uh, I, I don't know. Obviously you back... Be able to... Go ahead. You should be able to buy just like crush sleeves at like Summit Racing and have them shipped to you. They shouldn't be too expensive. Yeah, I'm not really worried about the cost. It's just the time involved. I have to wait for them to show up then I got to do this whole thing all over again. It's just... It sucks. Uh, yep. I, I get it, man. Actually, honestly, what are, you, what are your thoughts on uh, crush sleeve eliminators? I prefer them. Yeah, because that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Like, I'm kind of over this whole crush leave thing. Yeah, every re gear I've done, uh, I've done a crush leave eliminator in it. The only time I ever used crush, crush leaves was when I was in school learning how to do it initially. Right. So, yeah, it wasn't. The, the one time you steal on the crush leave was not it for me. If they made a crush leave eliminator, that, that's what I did. It just involves a lot more of putting it together and taking it apart. Yeah, the measuring measuring parts. Yeah, do you have these bearings lubed while you're measuring this stuff? Yeah, we talked about that too. Uh, right now, no. Definitely throw some lube in there and check it again. You might be okay. You not having lube on your bearings might be creating more friction, making your uh, torque higher. Do you think it's 10 pounds? Eight, in pounds, it could be. Yeah, that's what I meant. All right, well, I'm going to try that probably and see where I get and figure out what I'm going to do. All right, man. All right, I appreciate it. No problem, buddy. All right, later. Bye. All right, that was Bob. Bob's rebuilt or re-geared a bunch of axles in the past. So I kind of trust his opinion and what he says makes sense. I guess we'll try and see if we can get some oil down in there somewhere. Try again. And then I'll decide if I'm just going to send it or do it the right way. Right now I'm leading towards send it. I know you may be shocked. We got some lube sprayed down on one bearing, but we can't really get to the other one. And we got it to drop five pounds. So we're going to go with the assumption that once oil gets to the other bearing, we'll get uh, five more pounds. That'll put us right at the verge of spec. It's supposed to be between 14 and 19 inch pounds. So we're calling it and we're shoving it in. You shouldn't do that. Uh, first of all, I recommend uh, crush leave eliminator if you're doing this. Just be done with it. It's not a good design. So now we're gonna put the carrier back in and we'll check backlash and our tooth pattern and hopefully reassemble. All right, we got the carrier back in. We torqued our caps to 65, or no, 60 foot pounds. Now we're checking backlash. <clears throat> we got it set. Go ahead and move it, Curtis. 0 0.02. That's too much. Too much. We need 0 0.004 to 0 0.009 ish. So we're gonna fix that. Remember them shims I told you that are back here on either side? We are going to put like 10 thousandths on this side, which should push this ring gear over closer to the pinion, which should get us really close to our mark there. We had to rethink things a bit. So we said we wanted to add like 10 thousandths to driver's side, but you can't just add 10 thousandths to driver's side. You have to take some out of the passenger side as well. So now I have all of these shims Teeny tiny little pieces of metal. Kurt's over here doing maths. And uh, we're getting real confused. There's teeny tiny numbers involved. Kurt just yelled at me. You missed it. I have the camera on. 
told me I can't do math, which I already know. And then we discovered this is kind of dinged up. Can you see that? You see that ding there? Turns out I was doing all my measuring right on that ding. Isn't that wonderful? How are you feeling, Kurt? Absolutely horrible about any decisions I'm about to make. Didn't I just talk about being more positive? Yeah, you did. You did. Well, I'm not being that at right this moment. I'm good with that. This is passenger side? Whatever this goes. Oh my god. <laughs> the communication is terrible. Yellow. Yellow is passenger. You guys don't understand how many times I've told him this. Now I've done moved everything. This is this is Stop a Stop moving. Stop. <laughs> this is passenger? Yes. What's it supposed to measure? Correct. What's it supposed to measure? Correct. No, this is how we check if you've done this correctly. What's it supposed to measure? It should be right around 0.237, right? 244. You're measuring wrong. 241. Two, four, okay, I'm not, I guess I'm not, okay. That's that then. Kurt just steals my things. Two, three, seven. You're not supposed to squeeze so tight. What's this supposed to be at? Is this what we're using for drivers? Yeah. What's this supposed to be at? I don't know. 15 more than it was before. 15 more than it was before. Two, two, four, five. <laughs> Am I measuring on the ding again? You probably. Two, two, five. This is 15. It's two. 16. <laughs> 17. 17. No, it's actually 16. Okay. <laughs> but still, why can't I get these numbers to add up? Because you're mathing wrong. But it's not math. It's, it's, it's digital. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're slapping it in. Just call it, it in. Calling it. Hey! Forgot this. Ah, no! No! <laughs> Bad Kurt! Bad Kurt! Jesus. Got it! <sighs> Alright, we also got the uh, backlash figured out. It took. How many times did we do it? Seriously. Curtis. I'd say five. Do you think it was only five? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'd say five. Five-ish times. Uh, moving shims back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we got it. We are at point zero zero zero. no, point zero zero five. Yes. We need to be between point zero zero four and zero zero nine. So we're calling it, we're done. We're gonna slide the axles back in, put the, that's it. We're gonna slide the axles back in, put the cover on. Mm -hmm. And put the wheels back on. I have no fluid for it. I need every fluid for this truck, so it doesn't matter at this point. Okay, officially done. Rear end rebuilt for the second time or whatever. Um, wheels are back on, brakes are back on, rotors back on. It's all good to go. We did, however, forget one thing, didn't we, Curtis? Yep. We forgot to ink everything. So check the tooth alignment. Yeah. So I'm supposed to spread that goop on the ring gear and then run it a bunch of times and check where the teeth are actually meshing. And we forgot. So as it stands right now, I'm not gonna do it. I may change my mind because there's no fluid in this thing yet. I may change my mind and do it. But for today, at least we're not gonna do it. We're calling her done. Uh, next video you'll see on this truck is we're gonna create a list of all the little bitty odds and ends to make this thing run and drive. And uh, we're not that far away, so that's next. Hopefully the next video, it'll run. Not making any promises, don't hold me to anything, but maybe. So until next time, we'll see you guys in the future. See ya.